Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And as the title of the video says, we are going to do some faux freehand painting with gouache. I don't do freehand anything. This is why I love card making, you know, because I don't want to draw stuff or, or paint, you know, a scene or anything like that. But sometimes it's fun to kind of fake it. And I showed this set of gouache. Any gouache will work. But I got this set. Um, gosh, I got it a long time ago. I had bought it. And then I showed it in the haul video I did a month ago. If I remember, I'll, I'll post a link to that haul video um, at the end of this video. And I had a lot of you asking, like, when are you going to use it? And now. I'm going to use it now. <laughs> a, a lot of things I like to hoard. Anyway, for those that aren't aware of what gouache is. I think the easiest way to kind of explain it is you have acrylic paint, which is um, like permanent and opaque. And then you have watercolor, which is mostly transparent, uh, water soluble. You can reactivate it with water, etc. And gouache is kind of like the little hybrid child of the two. So gouache is more opaque, but it can be reactivated with water. You can thin it out more and watercolor with it if you want. Or you can use it more like a paint consistency and it will show up on dark cardstock. So I have had the idea for this card in the back of my mind, literally since I got this gouache. <laughs> so I finally, I was like, let's do it. You know, so this is actually my very first attempt at actually painting with gouache. A lot of you guys have seen me use it just for splatter. You know, my, my <laughs> I showed this in that haul video too. Uh, this ridiculously huge tube of white gouache that I use for, for splatter but I've never actually painted with it. So I did. This was my very first attempt. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. It still wasn't perfect, but I had fun. And I will show you guys how I did it. And like always, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. If you expand the description box, my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on one of my links and end up placing an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. That's what helps pay the bills and fund the channel and, you know, keeps the lights on. So keep watching and I'm going to show you guys how I made this card. So I started with some dark cardstock. This is Simon Says Stamps Soft Navy cardstock. Uh, black would work or um, Simon's Midnight Green would also look really nice. I just I wanted to use navy and this is just cardstock. This is not watercolor paper because I'm not using a bunch of water. I wasn't too worried about doing something like this it's when you're you know doing actual like watercoloring or using anything like very very liquid that you need to be a little more concerned um with your uh surface because regular cardstock isn't meant you know to hold up but for this it's fine and then i'm using simon's uh retro arcs stencil and just sort of, this is a, a what I call like a basic, like sort of a simple stencil pattern. Because as you can see, I'm just tracing most of this pattern with a pencil. Because even something as simple as like a rainbow arch, I don't want to freehand that. That's, that's not why I make cards. <laughs> I like stencils and stamps and wafer dies, you know. The, the shapes and everything are already predetermined. And then we can use our creativity making them our own. So I just took the stencil, held it on top of the cardstock, and I'm tracing it with a pencil. That's it. Just just super, super simple. This is what I mean. Like, if I can do this, anybody can do this. So once I've got everything um, traced out, I'm going to start getting my gouache prepared. So the gouache I'm using, this is the Altenew, uh It's called Strolling Through New York. It's a whole set of gouache. And... I was not, because this is literally my first time like using it, I wasn't prepared for how thick it is coming right out of the tube. I'm, that's fine, because I was expecting to needing to water it down a bit. Um, but yeah, it is. It's quite thick. And the, the thing to note with gouache, if you're wanting to paint with it, not just, you know, because like I said in the intro, you can, you can thin it down a bit more with water and like basically watercolor with it. When you're wanting to paint with it, I was watching a gouache artist's video recently and she was going on about the consistency and basically you're aiming for 
kind of the consistency of toothpaste, which is something I'm really glad I caught on to before like playing with it this for the first time. Um, cause I probably would have thinned mine out more than I needed to. And like I was saying, if you add too much water, like it's still going to work, but it would make my cardstock buckle more. It won't be as opaque. And since I'm going on a dark cardstock, I definitely want the opacity. If you wanted to test this out on like regular watercolor paper, you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. You could water this down a bit more, make it a little easier to work with. I trying to include all the random tips that I have bouncing around in my head. So I just have this random little plastic palette. I'll link to a similar one. I've had this one for eons and I'm putting my little blobs of paint. This all is going to look like a hot mess. In fact, the whole thing's a hot mess, but it's, it's kind of fun. So I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure like what colors I was going to use. So I was just kind of, I was again, flying by the seat of my pants, just winging it. I also added white from that separate ginormous tube that I have now multiple lifetimes of technically because that's all I've been using it for is splatter but this time I'm going to actually add it and um just a little paintbrush this is just my size two this is a dirt cheap paintbrush again I'll have a link to it this is the same ones I've been using for a long time these are the Royal and Langnickel Zen brushes super cheap I generally use these just for like for splattering I use them for watercolor too they're great so this is this little size two brush and I started by adding a bit of water and kind of and mixing up with this red to get it to a um, just a paintable consistency, you know, kind of aiming for that toothpaste consistency. Although this first one, I got it a little thinner than that, but I was still fine with it. And right this second here, it's a little bit, um, it, it was a little bit sped up. Now it's super sped up. I just took my time with it. And I'm also just not worried about it being perfect you know I, I I say these words but also I say it with um like I usually say to you guys like do as I say not as I do try not to overthink it I overthink everything <laughs> it, it just is what it is um and like I also always say perfection's overrated I was reminding myself of that constantly while doing this I was like it doesn't need to be perfect and I did want it to look hand-painted you know I didn't want it to be perfectly smooth perfectly even I wanted that that texture and and the the brush strokes to show up you know I wanted it to look like I sat and hand painted this so I also did not worry about getting it like I said like perfectly um, smooth you know the brush strokes are showing you can go over this you know you could layer do another layer on top of each one if you wanted to to get it you know a little more even etc I didn't worry about that I just I'm not worried about it you know, I, I wanted it to look like I did this by hand. And the thing also, though, to remember, that is one of the things because this is gouache and not paint. If you do layer on top and you're painting layers, you do, it will sort of reactivate the layer underneath. Um, that gets more into play, though, when you're painting like other images like that. This is why I specifically went with something simple like this. This just a kind of abstract or, you know, sort of geometric, like simple you know, just simple rainbow shape. Um, it's when you're doing, the, you know, florals or critters or things like that, where you are doing layers to create shadows, depth, etc. that you just need to keep that in mind. I'm not going to give any pointers on that yet. Because again, this this was my first rodeo with with painting with gouache. I will slowly graduate to maybe doing some other little things like stamping an image and painting that with gouache, because that's what I hope to do down the road, because I think it would be kind of fun. It's just a another thing to do you know something something different so I kept mucking around I was sort of making my own custom colors with this like adding white to some of them things like that and then just working my way around this panel of cardstock and filling in all of these little lines you could also skip um the the sections like kind of how the stencil itself was but I loved how this just worked out to do all the sort of all the colors of the rainbow onto each one of these and then once I was done, this just cleans up. I just wiped it off my, my glass work surface. It just wipes up the palette for now. I'm leaving as is you can reactivate this because again, it's gouache. So I can add a bit of water and reactivate these colors if I want to, you know, muck around with them, paint with them, splatter with them, things like that. So I'll leave it for now. And then if I change my mind or want to use the palette for other things, I can just wash it out and it'll be fine. So I, of course, I'm going to add splatter. That also just one 
because it's splatter. You guys know, I love splatter. But it also helps give, you know, draws the eye away so people aren't just focusing directly on like my uneven <laughs> little paint lines. So I used my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors. I had added a little bit of water to that one well, used the exact same brush, just swirled it up real good in there, put that background in my, my little splat box and then added all that gold splatter. And then for my sentiment, I'm using another little oldie but goodie favorite of mine. This is the CZ Design Love You Wafer Dye. And I die cut a couple scraps of white cardstock with it. And then the top layer I die cut from Simon's Matte Gold cardstock. And I'm going to stack all those layers together because as Laura Basson says, dimension is life. Or like I always remind everyone, she sings it. I will not sing it because I love you guys and you guys don't need to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so much nicer when she does it always plays in the back of my head constantly it's like dimension is life I'm like yes yes it is you guys know I'm nuts anyway stack those together with craft tacky glue topping it with the matte gold layer and then the outline I had die cut from vellum so I'm going to stick these to the vellum layer and then once I've got those adhered, I took a panel of white cardstock and I trimmed it down to three and three quarters by five inches. So smaller than what my card base is going to be. And I'm using another favorite of mine that I've used in many videos. This is the CC Design Clean Line Stacks um, stamp set because it's just got some good sentiments in here. So I took one of the larger sentiments from the set. And I put the white cardstock into my Misty. And I'm going to stamp the larger sentiment with Simon's Night ink. So just navy ink. And then the little sub sentiment, I'm going to line that up. And that one I'm going to ink up with honey ink. So kind of the closest thing to gold without actually getting into like pigment gold ink. Because I've talked about this before. I don't like using like um, metallic inks and that on panels I'm putting on the insides of my cards because it takes a long time to dry and I will generally smear it. So I got um, I got those stamped and then my card base is that same soft navy cardstock. So I scored that. It's gonna be a top folding A2 note card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And then the background that I had painted, I trimmed that down to three and three quarters by five inches as well. And I'm going to put uh, foam tape on the back of this. And I, this time I went with Altenews foam tape because it's a bit thicker. I wanted this popped up a little bit more. So I'm going to put that on the back and I'm going to adhere the die cut sentiment directly to this um, card front. I'm not going to pop it up or anything like that. I thought about it. I was like, hmm, you know either putting another cardstock piece behind it like I've shown in tons of videos or even popping it up with little strips of foam tape that sort of a thing but ended up deciding to just adhere it as is to um, to the card base so I'm going to get this adhered let the glue dry and then I can start adhering everything so I'm going to adhere that white panel to the inside of my card base again just using my craft tacky glue getting that into place and then I'm going to stick that to the inside of the card here. And then the card front, remove the, the backing of the foam tape and pop that into place onto the card base. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, and also to tie in more of the, the gold, I've got some stay gold sequins from Simon's Stamp as well. So I'm going to arrange those around my little sentiment here. And once I'm happy with the placement of these, I can just pick these up with my little embellishment wand and adhere them into place with my little dabs of craft tacky glue. So get my little triangle of embellishments and then adhere those down with the glue. I'm going to let that glue dry and this card is complete. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was just, it, it, this is a, a good starting point. If you're looking into, you know, you want to start playing around with gouache. And if you don't, you can just stencil it, you know, with inks and different things. There's so many options, but this was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video, as well as a link to my blog post. And in the blog post, I'll have the pictures and picture links a little easier to navigate. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, for thumbs upping and commenting. It helps a ton. I very much appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.